a very little bit, a tickle, very slight. Um, if you are a man raising the rabbits, you're gonna have a little bit problem. We know men have thicker skin. Women have always known that, but it's true. You, the testosterone causes your skin to be a little bit thicker. So you may end up having to feel the rabbit with your wrist, whatever. My hands are super, I 35 years of feeling rabbits every day. They're hypersensitive to what I'm feeling, what's going on with the rabbit. But you may use your fingertips, just the edges, and you'll get a better feel. So just the very tips of your fingertips going down. Even when I do that, I can feel how thin she is. Right. Your um, texture comes from your dough all the time. Your resistance comes from the buck all the time. I, there's always exceptions in, in everything, just like life. But the reality is the texture is always the dough. The doughs have the estrogen. They're going to have the richer coat. Almost always it's a doe that wins um, at convention or nationals because of that coat. So never, never keep a doe like that opal one with the protrusion. It's too tickly. And that one's a harder challenge to fix because I don't, well in my barn, I don't keep a buck to balance out backwards. I keep my bucks to give resistance because I know that's where it's coming from. So my name is Kathy Shulda, and I am, uh, I have bred Rex rabbits for 35 years. I've raised a number of other rabbits too, and had different experiences with fur, but my heart is with the Rex rabbits, and that's what I still do after 35 years. I've also, am an Arba judge, and I've been an Arba judge 27 and a half years, and I watch my fellow judges, and I watch my other exhibitors struggle with different things that are going on with Rex coats. It's not always as easy as you think it is. Our standard calls for 40 points on Rex fur, and it says extremely dense, straight, upright, and as nearly as possible, the same length of texture. For it, our key is our undercoat's gonna be to the left, our guard hair is going to be to the right. So the standard calls for both hairs to be the same length. That is not what anybody picks, not any judges, not any breeders. They pick for a different reasons, and we're gonna talk about that. I'm gonna get out a rabbit that has some fur faults, and we'll start talking about what's going on with the coats. So I'm not... So this doe has uh, two fur faults going for her. It's not a doe I would be keeping. We're not looking at type, we're just I know, looking at I know, fur. I know, but I just, it still looked off. <laughs> okay, we're, we're just looking at fur. So if you can look at this doe's coat, not where she's shedding, but her normal coat, you will see what's going on is actually this. So her undercoat is smaller in diameter than the hair shaft, of than the guard hairs. The guard hairs are actually longer they're actually thicker on this rabbit, and it causes it to have um, kind of a, I would describe that as a tick leaf thing. Some people, if you ran your hand over it, like at the beach, like if it was sandy, it tickles your palm. So she's just too long in guard hairs that are coming out. But not only is she long in the guard hairs, the diameter of the guard hair is thicker than the undercoat. So she has these two things going with this rabbit. She has a thicker guard hair and her undercoat is shorter. That's why you look at the prickly ones and see that. We can have that come up other times too, but that is one of the things that happens in this rabbit. I'm going to switch rabbits now where we're gonna to talk to about the rabbits that are the ones the judges pick. Um, actually, I wanna go ahead, while I have her out, I wanna go ahead and talk. I'll go, and no, I'll come back later, sorry. Baby. Oh, you're fine. <clears throat> so our standard calls for the fur to be almost the same length all over, but that is not what any judge picks, including me, and I'm a, rap, a Rex breeder. That is not what they pick at all. This doe has this kind of coat. So her undercoat is slightly longer 
than the guard hair, which gives her a, a real buttery feeling. Go down the sides where she's finished there. You can see how smooth that is. Not where she's shutting, but can you see how smooth mm -hmm. it is through that color? Sure. She's just growing the coat up over the top line, so it's not quite finished there. So you see a little bit more protrusion of guard hair on that. But this is a finished coat. And that's the kind of coat that the judges really like. And what's going on with that coat is, again, the undercoat is slightly longer than the guard hair. But they're both the same diameter on this rabbit. So you get this kind of thing going. Sometimes you can get a rabbit and even though our first rabbit even though our first rabbit has the guard hair longer she has something else going on her guard hair has too much give in it it calls for furs to be a good body and plush that's where I think that a lot of people get mixed up on a Rex. They think it has to be glossy and soft all over. You need some push, some plush to the rabbit. So when you bounce your hand across the rabbit, you're actually getting a little bit of pushback. It should, it should give you a spring. It even says that, offering a distinct springy resistance. So you should actually get some spring. This doe does not have that. This doe, when I put my hand on it, it goes all the way down into that fur. So even though her guard hairs are longer, she actually has too much give going in that coat. It's just too soft. I, don't, I did not have an example of one with um, the undercoat longer than the guard hair to show you, just this rabbit, but that's too soft. We don't have enough spring to that coat throughout. She actually has, um, this is more of what's going on with her, except that the guard hair is longer. So there's lots of things. We'll talk about how to fix that later. We'll get you back out. So when the judges pick a very smooth coated animal like this, often I watch they get a rabbit, it looks very glossy on the table. And it does say about having that glossy, but it's too, too much give. This doe, when I bounce across, she has a spring to her coat, and I'm doing no more pressure than I was doing on the other rabbit, but I get a lot more spring and push to that coat. No matter where I go, it should be with that, the whole rabbit all the way through. That means her guard hairs are long enough to give me that push back and resistance enough. Even though hers are thicker, you have to have that resistance throughout. So this is what judges pick, and um, that's what's going on with her. The problem with a rabbit too often is we start getting longer or thicker in the undercoat because <clears throat> they make a real glossy rabbit. And then the guard hair still is a little bit shorter, but you've got too much undercoat and too much give. It feels so slick. They're not a slick rabbit. They're not slick like a satin. They should have that spring to them. As a breeder, this is what starts to happen to us. The judges like coats like this with a little bit of undercoat coming out and the guard hair. Pretty soon, breeders start keeping rabbits like that and they start retracting the guard hair, more like this. So you have the undercoat and the guard hair. And then you have too much give and you have a crimp in the coat. This part of the hair shaft actually bends over that rabbit. It's more um, often you'll see it in dilutes and stuff and people think they have Asterex, which are the old kind of Rex where they're curly coated. They're not really curly coated. It's this hair shaft bending over top of that rabbit. So it has a different thing going on. It talks about not waving. There are, there, Historically, there was a breed called Asterex with a very curly coat. Um, I know of only a couple left in this country. People think they have them because they're doing that. An Asterex actually has a curly coated coat like this. Anyway, what happens to the, us is we start retracting the, the guard hair, retracting the guard hair, retracting the guard hair until pretty soon the coat is just way too soft. 
too much give. It looks slick. And I know that a lot of judges like that. They think it looks really good. It's a slick rabbit. It's a soft rabbit. But it has no spring that's going to that rabbit. So, what happens about that? It's actually the judges, us, me included, because I picked the rabbits that have a little more undercoat. They are the judges that end up causing us to cause that retraction. They like these coats, so we start keeping these coats. And pretty soon, we have retracted that guard hair down, retracted the guard hair down, retracted the guard hair down, till you don't have any guard hair. So what you need to do is start thinking about what you're gonna put into your program. You're looking for a buck, a buck that has a resistance coat, maybe a little bit of a tickle to it. You're putting that guard hair all the way back up again. Guard hair on the left. <laughs> guard hair, you're putting that guard hair all the way back up again because here we go again. We start breeding and breeding and breeding until we're retracting that guard hair all the way down. You always have to start the process over again by bouncing that fur all the way back up again and then retract. Don't get wrapped up in color. When you think you need a buck to give the resistance of coat, get a buck that has the resistance of coat. Rex fur is 40 points. We only have 10 points on color. So it's not a big deal. It's what you see on a Rex, and because of the intensity of the, the shortness of the coat, it causes that color to pop. But don't get wrapped up in the color for doing that. Um, I've done Rex coats. Um, gosh, at convention I've won best of breed probably about six times with that, and best for, I think, about the same amount of time. And it's been with different color animals. I've done it with a white, I've done it with a black, I've done it with a broken. My proudest moment was when I did it with a blue. People think that blues are different because of that fur. They think it's supposed to be softer. It's not supposed to be softer. You can make that coat whatever you want it to be if you're careful about how to breed it. The, the blue doe that I one with did happen to have a black father. So she had the black guard hairs to give it resistance of coat and then have the softness to carry it through. A lot when we see different color rabbits, um, casters, casters have a tendency to have a longer guard hair than an undercoat. Um, chinchillas have a tendency to have a longer guard hair and a shorter undercoat. So often on those varieties, we get a little bit stuck <coughs> of where to go with those colors um, because, because of that protrusion. Otters tend to be always both the same length or a little bit longer under, with, a, with the guard hair too. So sometimes you'll feel the tickle come across that. But when you're thinking about the, the fur, you need the fur, it's half the rabbit. Bodies are, you want a good body, but bodies are easy to fix. Fur, once you understand it, you can fix. But when you start with something like this or like this, you have a big challenge of how you're going to improve that coat to make it go all the way through. Um, I'm always thinking that way when I'm breeding in my barn. I think of it like a puzzle, and color is my last decision, almost always. I think, okay, this doe needs more hip, so I take her to a buck with more hip. This doe, if I were keeping that doe, and I'm not, that broken opal, I would say, what do I need to do? I would not keep that broken opal because her guard hair is protruding. Your um, texture comes from your doe all the time. Your resistance comes from the buck all the time. I, there's always exceptions in, in everything, just like life. But the reality is the texture is always the doe. The does have the estrogen. They're going to have the richer coat. Almost always it's a doe that wins um, at convention or nationals because of that coat. So never, never keep a doe like that opal one with the protrusion. It's too tickly. And that one's a harder challenge to fix because I don't, well, in my barn, I don't keep a buck 
to balance out backwards. I keep my bucks to give resistance because I know that's where it's coming from. Um, sometimes, once in a while, I do breed for color. Everybody does. But the reality is that's not my main goal. My main goal is body and fur, always in the barn. I know some people want to concentrate on X, you know, purple rabbits, whatever, and they want to do purple rabbits, but it's harder to do that if you're not bringing in from other varieties to make that happen in your barn. I said the blue that won with me had a black father, so I'm willing to go all the way around. You will hear there is a story about never, never, never breed blacks to blues or blues to um, whites. And the reason about that is, um, it's actually a historical story. When Rex came to this country, we Rexed everything. Every breed had Rex. So Amer there were Americans, American Rex. There were Flemish, there were Flemish Rex. There were New Zealands, there were New Zealand Rex. There were, you could go on down. Uh, uh, Palomino is a good one too, because we're fighting that with our lynx problem right now the color. Palominos were here first, but then we made Palomino Rex and hence and so forth. So it was true. Nobody mixed colors because you were mixing breeds. You weren't really just mixing colors. But that old wives tale has gotten stuck in people's minds till they think they cannot cross color to, you know, different colors together. Um, when you'll notice when, when I started Rex 35 years ago, you notice a lot of differences in body types of where they came from. Often when I started with my blues, they were long. They, they had a body shape more like an American, so they were a longer rabbit. The blacks, the whites, they came from New Zealand, so they looked more like New Zealand. The lynx rex came off of Palominos, so they had more of the characteristics of the Palomino rabbits. So a lot of things happened because of those colors until 50, year, 50 years ago, we made our own National Rex Club before I even started. Um, so 35 years ago, I came in, but we saw a lot of that happen. Nowadays, you can most, not every color, but you can mostly breed every variety around, and you can find enough rabbits in other varieties to help you with that fur problem to make it, make it happen, to make it consistent. When you know the buck in your barn that throws that consistency, that resistance of coat, use him. When you have a doe that has that wonderful, wonderful buttery texture, use her. I experiment more, but when you're getting started, you need to stick with what you know works and then start branching out. Talk to other breeders. Lots of breeders have lots of other thoughts and you know what's going on with the breed. It's a, it's a challenge because there's only two breeds in the standard out of 51 that have this kind of coat. And Mini Rex standard, although it's written exactly like the Rex standard, only has 35 points on fur instead of 45 points. And it is written to be the Rex standard. I bet if you're a Mini Rex breeder and you measure your coat, they're, they're shorter than what it calls for in the standard. Rex have a bigger body, they have more, more ability to carry that coat further than a mini rex. If a mini rex had a coat like some of those, they would be really fuzzy. So you want to be careful about that. Um, I know it's written that way in the standard, but that's not exactly what's happening. Um, if we had an audience, I'd say, are there any questions about what to do about fur? I want to, I want to, I want to feel just like this. Okay, absolutely. You're welcome to. Now go use your fingertips. Um, okay, I'll, we'll talk about that too. <laughs> Alright, so uh, I see what you're saying, yeah. Okay, so this, yeah, so this one you said that it's... So the guard here is too oh, long. Yeah, you can see it? That. You can see it. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so you can see the guard here is too long. So see, you can see it each color. Sometimes they, sh sometimes they shift by color, but she's got way too much guard hair going throughout. And even though she has that guard hair, she doesn't have the resistance. Um, it, interestingly enough, we, Alan uh, Messick is a good friend of mine, and we were ex experimenting one time. We took 20 plucks off of hips and sent them to a micrometer 
to measure the coats. And exactly what I'm telling you is exactly what we were feeling on the coats. It was very, yeah, if you, you can make it plush, push, but it's not a push. But it's not, no, it's not a push. It's, it's not, not a, a push. push. So if you push on the... It's not even finished up over that top. I'm gonna make sure have kink. No, I, I see what you mean. I, I agree with you on that. I honestly thought that it had to have a kink in order to have a little bit of a joking. structure. It's a straight, it's straight, you want them as straight as possible. Interesting. So that's a different thing when you're looking at the fur. You can tell if they're finished. So when I blow on this rabbit, she's not finished up over the top, but she's finished here. So we'll see what we can do here. See, I can hardly see the skin. She's so dense. Mm -hmm. Can you see no, that? No, I, I totally agree. Just, I can't believe how dense she is. So when, and when, um, even though she's not finished up at the top, I'll get the other one out and I'll blow on it too. Judges blow on it and they think if they can blow all the way down, that it's a finished coat. And they don't have the density. Yeah, yeah. It's really easy to finish a, a thin coat than this kind of a coat. I've been touched for grooming. Yes, I have other things. No, that I I'm do not meaning that. Yeah. What um, uh, so on dent, so on density specifically, it's the amount of it's the number of hair shafts. You don't want to see any skin. It's the amount of hair shafts per square inch. Right. Do you feel that if they have a thicker coat, that it makes them appear more dense, or not? No. See, her guard hair is thicker. And even though she's an opal, I can see all the way down in right. this rabbit. Right. I mean, she is an opal, so you're getting that undercolor. But you can see because it's a thinner coat. Right, it's thinner. Yeah. And often judges will blow in the coat and think because it opens up, it's finished. Right, that's and not that the case. That has nothing to do with That's how much density it is. Density's playing a factor under that. Yeah, <clears throat> it, there's, a whole, uh, there's a whole different thing going on than what you see with that rabbit. Right, right. It's coarse and thin. and it's there's thin. nothing there. There's too much right. give in this coat. Right. It's just a, it's just a problem. Right. <laughs> so even if that was, even as a buck, you're not keeping that rabbit because there's, 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 cause, cause there's just way too thin. Absolutely not right. because there is too much. I need, I need push on my bucks right. too. Right. Although I will excuse a little bit, a very little bit, a tickle very slight um if you are a man raising the rabbits you're gonna have a little bit problem we know men have thicker skin women have always known that but it's true you the testosterone causes your skin to be a little bit thicker so you may end up having to feel the rabbit with your wrist whatever my hands are super i 35 years of feeling rabbits every day they're hypersensitive to what i'm feeling what's going on with the rabbit but you may use your fingertips, just the edges, and you'll get a better feel. So just the very tips of your fingertips going down. Even when I do that, I can feel how thin she is. Right. Um, if she were a, a black and white, it would look glossy. It would look, without the protrusion, it would look more finished because it is easier. You have less hair to finish. So when you groom them, you have less hair to worry about. We're grooming them. People ask about that um, grooming. I use water and I back comb them. It pulls out a lot of the hair. I'm always doing that, <laughs> picking out hair that's on the rabbit, but I back comb them. Basically, I do that all the way through. I have been known to use a blower like the, the Angora people do. Be careful when you use a blower to go straight, straight and not do this because you can actually tangle the hairs together. So when you're doing that, you want the hairs to stand up as straight as possible. You don't want them to kink and, and turn. Actually, I thought I saw some. Oh, she's got some shorter ones going on here, but. Mm -hmm. You can see that it's not a clean open. It should open like a flower clean and open when it lays out. It shouldn't open and be up and down, tangly. See, some, 
what I'm describing, and it's not accurate here, but can you see the clumps of hair mm -hmm. that I'm describing? Mm -hmm. That's, they're tangled together. So I use a uh, open tooth dog comb. It has big open teeth, and I will also do that to straighten the hair to make sure that it's straight. Let's see what's going on with her coat, because I bet you she's... You decide you like that page better, huh? Yep, you can see. So done. She hasn't been groomed. But see how it opens up like a flower? Right. Right. There was a spot where she's not finished. It's tangled there. There you go. Mm -hmm. It just mm -hmm. opens up evenly and, mm -hmm. and clean all the way through. So you can see that this is more finished on the sidelines and the top. She's not finished right there. So that's what's going on with them. You were saying on the, like, that some colors, like when you won with the blue, that it was, like, you were really proud of that. Um, does the color, or when we're judging them, should the color of the rabbit change how we're evaluating the fur? No. No. Every, ra every rabbit, I don't care what breed I judge, is a white rabbit until the last minute because color is almost the least, well, there's some exceptions. Belgians, etc. Right. That's the least of, uh, I don't want to adjust my water. Where did it go? Oh, oh there it is. Um, anyway, when you're judging rabbits, almost all the rabbits, we have some rat breeds that are specific on color where they make a lot of deal about like Belgians and so forth. But on other rabbits, Rex, satins, mini Rex, you think about the type and what you're feeling first. You look at the colors the last. Well, and the, te the texture and density and all that, you're, it's, the rec standard is the rec standard. It's not, hey, this is what we look for in blues. This is what we look for in yes. Belgians. Yes, uh-huh. And uh, what, um, often <coughs> people forget that recs only have 10 points on color. It's only 10 points. So and what are you going to fault it on? You know, how much? Two points, three points? If that body and that fur, that feel and that fur aren't there, then you're not going to have any kind of a chance at all. I don't care if it's the most intense blue rabbit in the world. You have to have everything else about them, you know, going forward with that rabbit. I was talking about, um, we, our rabbits came off, the lynx came off of the lynx palomino, and our lynx palomino standard is written just like the lynx palomino. It's different than the mini rex lynx. And, but people want to judge, there's back to, you asked me about color. Mm -hmm. Don't get mixed up in that. You need to refer to the standard. You need to not say, oh, this is the correct links and this is the wrong, the wrong links. They're different. They're written different. They describe them different. It's a lot on other colors too. So making sure that you're paying attention to that when you're judging a rabbit. Don't get wrapped up in the color of another breed that you expect it to be. Mini Rex have 15 points on color. It, it, that's where the extra point came off of their fur going on to color. So it matters more, apparently, to the Mini Rex people to pay attention to their color. We pay attention to our color, but we don't get as wrapped up in it. Right. I don't get as wrapped up in it. Right. Um, when you're looking at length on Rex fur, are there a lot of them that are more too short, ideal, or do, they, do many of them get too long? It, it, ca it calls in the standard <laughs> for them to be about, um, even, I guess we might have done away with that. Well, it says half in, seven eighths inch ideal is five eighths inch. If you measure them, you're gonna be surprised. They're not that long. Yeah. So it doesn't, and, and that's the same as the mini rex. Right. The mini rex are shorter than those coats that right. you're feeling throughout there. So it talks about, so if you put a dime, you can start measuring, or your finger, whatever you want, you can tell the difference in those coats. Did those coats, like you've been in rex for, for an extremely long time, like did they used to be that long? Like did they used to be longer? 
or no? Um, when they first came in off of other breeds, yes, they were longer, depending okay. on the breeds that they came in off of. So <coughs> you had a different kind of a fur on a blue that came up from <coughs> an American because it was a different fur structure than you had on the blacks and whites that came off of New Zealand's. So yes, the furs were, we worked to, were, we've tried to, I've tried to work on making that uniform across the varieties through the years, just making it all the same thing. But yes, you still get some varieties that do have a tendency to have just a little bit more length to them. And I think it's a throwback from, a, from what we did before. I don't know why it was fun to Rex everything, but we did. Because <laughs> it was a good idea at the time. <laughs> it was a unique, it was, a, it was I, the unique trade of the day and everybody, I mean, the coats feel amazing though. I mean, that's. Yes, I, can't, I can't imagine finishing a Rex coat on a Flemish. Yeah. <laughs> that's a lot of rabbit. <laughs> trying, to, trying to make that finish all the way throughout. I'm trying to think of questions. People always ask me about that, especially on does, okay, how to fix it. Be careful, and I, I will tell you that it's harder to fix. If you don't have a good fix on a does coat, it's harder to fix the rabbits. You need a good dough and then work with the buck. You need that good buttery texture on the dough? Yes, yes, yes. So we definitely need that. What we do, what we do, is keep bucks that have that buttery texture also. So then you you have two of these things going, and that's what starts getting you in trouble. So you have to. And then we're not sure why it's getting softer and softer, and then that's when we have to have a guard here come back in. I guess this one, the guard here come back in to give it a little bit of push again. Until we retract it again. It's just a vicious cycle. I go through it all the time. I think you, you think you have those, and the rabbit dies. <laughs> it's producing those rabbits. And then you're looking for that mix again. What makes that work in your barn? So which rabbits th which rabbits throw which things that you need. I even have a rabbit that I keep just because he's a fabulous breeder. And when the toes are awful, I just give them to him. <laughs> That's the trait he has. Yeah, I'm like here you train him. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Everybody gets it. if you misbehave, you get to go here. <laughs> but yes, it's always always working on different things, and I have you know I have my pet projects too. Even working with this, I'm I used to raise lynx, and I haven't for a long time, and I'm back raising lynx again, which is a challenge. That's neat. That's neat. Did, uh, I was not planning on asking you any of these, uh, but knowing that you judged that show in England, that you were the first one to get to judge Rex. Yes. What's I mean, the coat? What's the coats like over there? And shorter, you don't have to answer this if you want to. They're shorter. Um, they've caught. There, it's a big deal. Color is a big deal to them in in England. So they put a lot more emphasis on coat and color, and not as much on body. So I had bodies all over the places where we were wrapped up more in the feel, the texture of the feel. And even even they were asking me in England what I was feeling and why, and the color. The color is a big deal. They have their own clubs there. They have the Black Rex Club. They have the White Rex Club. They have the Blue Rex Club. They do have Shaded Rex Club, which is all the shaded. They have some varieties we don't have, and their show, quotes are shorter. Um, once long ago, somebody said that that I had English fur on one of my rabbits, and I, what does that mean? And it, what it means is they have a shorter coat. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the people have talked about that. I know a lot of European rabbits come into this country to do different things for the breeds here. There is no way on earth I would import a Rex from England. It's just a different coat. Yeah, not just the different coats. I, the body would take yeah. a long time to fix. Yeah. And I have coats as good yeah. as what I felt. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I love their texture over there. It was very slick, but it was... It was a shorter, slicker coat. Uh, it's shorter. Yeah. Yeah, so it's definitely shorter. And um, they have just, a, they have definitely um, this going on. So it's the undercoat and the bar here. That's why they're slicker. Yeah. And it didn't feel, it didn't feel like it had the screaminess to it. No, it doesn't. Oh. It doesn't. Yeah. But they're looking for something different than right. we're looking for here. Right. Yeah. So it just all the time working on it. Yeah. Very good. I don't have anything else. I appreciate you doing this. No problem.